Hi, I'm the History Guy. I have a degree in history and I love history. And if you love history too, this is the channel for you. Here's an interesting question of historical trivia. What important historical event occurred on September 5th of 1752 in England? If you don't immediately know, you can try to divine it from the period. George II was King of England. Henry Pelham was Prime Minister. England was not technically at war, but they were conducting a proxy war against the French on the Indian subcontinent. And in the colonies, Ben Franklin conducted his famous electricity experiment with his kite earlier in the year in 1752. And if you still don't know what important event happened on September 5th, it's in fact a trick question. No historical events of any importance occurred in England on September 5th of 1752, and we know that because there was no September 5th in England in 1752. And the reason why is a story that deserves to be remembered. There is archaeological evidence that people had methods of keeping time based on the lunar cycles as far back as the Neolithic period. In 2013, archaeologists discovered a group of pits in Aberdeenshire in England that appear to correspond with the phases of the moon that date back some 10,000 years and may be the world's oldest known lunar calendar, although there is some dispute over that claim. As the phases of the moon are easy to observe, they serve as an effective method of tracking time, and lunar calendars are still used today by some cultures to determine religious holidays. And while it makes sense to track time based on the phases of the moon, there is a problem as the moon is not in sync with the sun, and thus 12 lunar periods is only 354 days, well short of a solar year, the period of time required for the Earth to make one complete revolution around the sun. The problem is that tracking time by the moon means that lunar months will cycle through the seasons, making a lunar calendar a poor tool regarding one of the most important reasons to track months, agriculture. The problem is usually addressed through a process called intercalation, in which additional days are added in order to sync a lunar calendar with the seasons. Since a solar year does not include a whole number of lunar months, most so-called lunisolar calendars count 12 lunar months as a year, but add an additional month every two or three years in order to resync the calendar with the seasons, and thus different years will have different numbers of days. There are various methods of intercalation used for lunisolar calendars, although the one used by the Banks Islands of Vanuatu, based on the spawning cycle of the Palolo worm, is perhaps the most interesting. The early Roman calendar was such a lunar solar calendar. The Romans tried to synchronize the months with the first crescent moon following a new moon, resulting in some months of 29 days and some months more. They then used intercalation to sync the calendar. Every other year they would shorten February and add a leap month, or intercalaris, the process is still the reason that February has 28 days on the modern calendar. Roman debts were typically due on the first of each month, called the Calendae, and payments were tracked in a ledger book called the Calendarium, which is the genesis of the term calendar. But the process was still imperfect, adding approximately four days every four years too much to be in line with the solar year. And of course, over time, that would show as the calendar would no longer be in sync with the seasons. So in 46 BC, Julius Caesar consulted a Greek astronomer named Sosigenes of Alexandria to create a better calendar. The new calendar divided a 365-day year into 12 months, with some months 31 days and some 30, but retaining the shortened 28-day February. But an intercalation was still required to keep the calendar in sync, and so one additional day was added to February every four years. The so-called Julian calendar was used by Edict throughout the empire, but it still had a flaw. The average length of a year on the Julian calendar is 365.25 days, but a solar year is actually slightly shorter, 365.2425 days, a difference of three days every 400 years, or about two-tenths of one percent. That seems small, but over enough time it became a problem, and was most noticeable in terms of a specific religious holiday, Easter. Easter is the most important Christian feast, and its date traditionally was determined based on a solar event, the vernal equinox. But the date was actually fixed by the calendar, and Caesar's two-tenths of a percent discrepancy meant that, over 1600 years later, Easter was no longer landing where Easter had traditionally been celebrated by early Christians relative to the vernal equinox. And so, in 1582, Pope Gregory XIII introduced a calendar reform called the Gregorian Calendar that adjusted the Julian calendar so that rather than a leap year every four years, every year that was exactly divisible by four would be a leap year, except for years that were exactly divisible by 100. But those centurial years are leap years if they are exactly divisible 
by 400. And so, for example, the year 2000 should have been a leap year because 2000 is evenly divisible by 4, but should not have been a leap year because 2000 is evenly divisible by 100, but was a leap year because 2000 is evenly divisible by 400. The Gregorian calendar is the calendar most commonly used, at least for civil purposes, throughout the world today. But there was still a problem. In 1501, King Henry VII of England's oldest son, Arthur, the Prince of Wales, married Catherine of Aragon, the youngest surviving child of King Ferdinand II of Aragon and Queen Isabella I of Castile. The goal of the marriage was to cement an alliance between England and Spain, but just 20 weeks after being married, Arthur died of a sweating sickness. Still trying to make a marital alliance with Spain, Henry VII betrothed his dead son's bride to his second son, Henry, just 11 years old although the two did not actually marry until 1509 after Henry ascended to the throne as Henry VIII following his father's death. But by 1525, Henry had become frustrated as he and Catherine had failed to produce a male heir. One son had died after just seven weeks and two more had been stillborn. Moreover, Henry had fallen in love with another woman, Anne Boleyn, who refused to be seduced so long as she could not be queen. That prompted Henry to seek an annulment from the Pope, Pope Clement VII, claiming that his marriage was blighted in the eyes of God because Catherine had been his brother's widow. The Pope refused on multiple grounds, one of which might well have been that following the sack of Rome in 1527, the Pope was being held prisoner by the Holy Roman Emperor Charles V, who happened to be Catherine of Aragon's nephew. Frustrated, Henry VIII married Anne Boleyn anyway in 1533, and the Pope responded by excommunicating Henry, causing England to break with the Roman Catholic Church and establish the Independent Church of England in 1534. And England and the Pope were still not on good terms 48 years later, when Pope Gregory changed the calendar. While the Gregorian calendar became Catholic canon via a papal bull in 1582, most Protestant nations, like England, thumbed their nose at Gregory and continued on with the Julian calendar. In fact, Henry's daughter, Elizabeth I, briefly considered adopting a similar reform, but gave up under opposition from Anglican church bishops who argued that the Pope was, literally, the biblical fourth great beast of Daniel. The split was still an issue in 1754. Understand that George II was only king because in his grandmother's time, 50 Catholics who were higher in line for the throne had been excluded based on acts of parliament that restricted the royal succession to Protestants. But much of the rest of Europe had switched in the intervening time, including the other half of the United Kingdom, Scotland, which had moved to the Gregorian calendar under King James VI in 1600. And Parliament complained that because of the discrepancy in dates between England and most of her neighbors, frequent mistakes are occasioned in the dates of deeds and other writings, and disputes arise therefrom. And so the Calendar Act of 1750 moved England to what was, in effect, the Gregorian calendar without actually using that name. To facilitate the change and sync with their neighbors, 11 days had to be removed from the calendar in 1752 to account for the effect of nearly 18 centuries of Julius Caesar's two-tenths of a percent miscalculation. Citizens of England went to bed on September 2nd, 1752, and woke up the next day on September 14th. Nothing happened on September 5th because there was no September 5th. In addition to moving England to the Gregorian calendar, the Calendar Act of 1750 also made the official start of the New Year in England, January 1st. Prior to the Calendar Act, the New Year actually started in England on March 25th. There has been some historical argument that there were riots based on the Calendar Act, that people were in the streets shouting, give us back our lost 11 days. But most historians agree now that no riots occurred and that that myth started because of a misunderstanding of some political satire that was written to make fun of Tories who tried to make the calendar reform an issue in the election of 1755. England was by no means the last country to move to the Gregorian calendar. Sweden, for example, tried to start moving gradually starting in 1700 and taking out a day a year, but that resulted in a period where they were off of both the Julian calendar and the Gregorian calendar, and so they gave that up, and they didn't end up making the change actually until a year after England, when in 1753 they just made a short February. Many Eastern European countries didn't actually make the move until the 20th century. In Russia, for example, the move was not made until after the October Revolution of 1917. And ironically, when the dates are adjusted, the October Revolution didn't occur until November. Some nations today still use the Julian calendar to determine things like religious holidays, but use the Gregorian calendar for civil business. Notably, former Protestant and Orthodox countries adopted the solar part of the Gregorian calendar, but they rejected the lunar part, which was used to determine the date of Easter. Instead, they use a completely different calculation that comes to the exact same answer, but doesn't give credit to a Catholic pope.
And while it might seem a historical triviality to say that nothing happened in England between September 4th and September 13th of 1752 because they skipped those 11 days, it is undoubtedly extremely useful that despite all our other disagreements, the vast majority of the world at least agrees on today's date. I'm the History Guy, and I hope you enjoyed this edition of my series, Five Minutes of History, short snippets of forgotten history, five to ten minutes long. And if you did enjoy it, please go ahead and click that thumbs up button, which is there on your left. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to write those in the comment section. I'll be happy to respond. And if you'd like five minutes more of Forgotten History, all you need to do is subscribe.